In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use a model-defined function for the entity framework and a pivot grid for Windows Forms, and then bind the data in that pivot grid to the model-defined function. The model-defined function exists in the entity framework data model only, versus, for example, a model-declared function that actually exists in the storage provider like the SQL Server database. So let's take a look. Start with a Windows Forms application, and we'll add a new item to it. We need an ADO.NET Entity Framework model, so I'll add that from the Add New Items dialog. And we'll call this the Northwind model. I'll walk through the Data Model Wizard. Let's choose Generate from Database and click Next. I've got a connection to my Northwind database. I'll use the default name for the Entity class, which is an Object Context, and click Next. It's going to list the database objects, and I'm going to select the products table. You can use any table you'd like. This is convenient. Most people have access to the Northwind database. And click Finish to close the wizard. This will add my entity data model, and there it is. Now, the model defined function is actually a function that completely defined in the model, and we have to edit that manually. So there's two levels, the storage level and the conceptual level. And we want to add the model defined function to the storage level first. I happen to have that code written here, and I'm going to go ahead and borrow that from my other project. Essentially, it's a function tag that goes inside the schema section. I'll use the name get products by reorder level is composable false. The is composable attribute of the function tag just means that we can't call or nest calls to model defined functions so I won't be able to call another model-defined function from within this function. And then in the command text, which is expected first, I'll put my SQL statement. Remember to use the at parameter in the SQL statement. The parameter tag is expected next. Don't use the at in the parameter name attribute. It's an input parameter. The type is an int, and I don't really need a maximum length here, so I'll remove it. So I've got my SSDL content and I've got the model defined function as a SQL statement, and it will check for products where the reorder levels greater than some input value. I want to go ahead and close that and save it. Now I'll open my model in Design View. If I look at the model browser here, I can see I've got my storage level model defined function. The next step is to add that function at the conceptual level. We do that because the entity framework works at the conceptual level versus the storage level. I'm going to use the same function import name as my stored procedure name. If I have varied stored procedure type names, for example, my database, and I want to clean those up and make those more object-oriented or more readable, I can actually change the name here. And this is going to actually return my list of product entities, so I'm going to change the collection up to product entities and click OK. Now that I know this is in the conceptual level here, and we can verify that, I've got it here in the storage level, and I've got it here in the conceptual level, in the function imports, I can go ahead and use that in my code. I've got my blank form here, and I want to bind the products that come back for a given reorder level to an extra pivot grid. To do that, I add the pivot grid control to the form and dock it to fill the available area. I can do a little bit of a cheat here. I invoke the data source configuration wizard by clicking on the smart tag, and I use the wizard to configure the product objects. The data source wizard will bind to entity objects like product here, but it won't bind to model defined functions. So we can start by binding it to the object here, and that will allow me to retrieve my fields. I select the pivot grid control and run the designer. I select retrieve fields, and these fields will now show up on my extra pivot grid. Let's close the designer. The last step is to actually query the model using the Entity Framework version 4, and we're going to change the product binding source to results from my function. So I'll grab my code that I've already written over here, and I'll reuse this code. Okay, so the Northwind Entities is an instance of my model defined by the Entity Framework. This is generated code. 
If I'm curious and want to see that code, I can open the model code and expand it, and I can see there's my north wind entities and my object context. If I look in here, I can see there's a stub added for me when I did the import for my get products by reorder level. So this is good. By using the import feature of the designer, the entity framework will go ahead and write my code for me. I want to put the entity's object at the class level, so it's not removed after my form constructor initializes. Now I've got this entity object, and everything gets really easy here. I can write a general link query and use my entities and call my model defined function, get products by reorder level, and I'll set the reorder level to 10. I'll complete my link query here, and I'll change the product binding source from product to the results, which is an I enumerable of product that I got back from my get products by reorder level function. And I'll go ahead and refresh the data. That's it. Let's run the application. Okay, so here's my extra pivot grid, and I'm going to go ahead and compose the look of my pivot grid here at runtime, but you can certainly do this at design time if you want. I'll put some data on here, and I'll put my reorder level in here, and go ahead and order this. So you can see I've got just the products that have a reorder level greater than 10, and they're in my grid, and now I can use my grid as I normally would. I can filter, form some filters, I can sort in the category ID, I can compose my extra grid a little differently, and maybe put some column values in here, and that's it. So model declared function, to be clear, exists in the storage provider like the SQL Server database, and model defined function is one that we actually write in the entity framework model itself. And either type of function can then be imported at the conceptual level and called and used. And in this case, it can be used as the data source for my extra pivot grid. Thanks for watching, and of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress.